I wish it was fake news. And this is like my fifth take with this video because I have a lot of unscripted but collected thoughts to, to share about Gregory Rivers. I dare not pronounce his Hong Kong Cantonese name because I'll only muck it up. I can only type it, I can't say it properly. I'm obviously saddened and uh, a bit upset and a little bit annoyed by, by, by the news of his suicide. And, and, that's, and that's only because there is this, there is this re repeating pattern of famous Hong Kong people who, who decide to go out on their terms and it leaves a lot of us sort of scratching our head as to well why did they do that why would they want to do that where is the people that surround them in their lives that could probably discuss with them to not do that or just give them hope the thoughts of Leslie Chung is still in the people of Hong Kong's minds or the minds of Hong Kong people sorry and don't forget Anthony Bourdain who was in Hong Kong and then and then he left as well. And now you've got um, Gregory Rivers. And he obviously lived in Hong Kong at a, on a much deeper level than I ever will do. But while I've lived here, there is a duality that exists here on, on various levels. And I want to explain the, some of that nuance or that duality. And one of them is that as a Westerner, I can live here and I don't need to learn the language. That's something that Gregory didn't want to do. And he went full on with Cantonese. And I remember speaking to his wife and she said, he speaks Cantonese better than me, <laughs> which is which is kind of, well, it's a nice thing to say anyway, uh, to a complete stranger because I, I met her, I think, I think I met her with Gregory or it was, she made that comment the second time I met Gregory. And if you've done your Google searches on YouTube, you, you'd know that I've, I've met him quite a few times and had him on this very YouTube channel, which I'll go into uh, a little bit later, but I want to talk about this duality first. And so he lived and breathed Hong Kong to, to its fullest extent. Whereas I, I've been here for 12 years now and I barely know a hundred words in Cantonese and those that I do know, I'm going to butcher because I can't get the tones right. And it's a very slow process, but it does say something about his level of enthusiasm for this city, but doesn't say, don't get me wrong. I love this city as well. I uh, I'm just would make excuses as to as to why I haven't. I can't speak Cantonese in on any level. Okay, but I was thinking about it on my way back today, where I live in this world, where all day at work nobody has said anything to me about Gregory River, Gregory Rivers passing and nobody on the street and I haven't seen any news articles or TV spots because I don't have a TV and I don't I don't consume the the media here in this city and it's so easy to just forget that he was here and it's so easy to remember how easy it is to be here and it's it's just super unfortunate that he's done this of course you don't like it I don't like it but we, we, we can't like just judge and I want to hold off my judgment what I do want to do is let you know that of course I've met him there's three hours worth of conversation with him on this channel but I do want to share a little story about how I met him because it's kind of unusual and it's a nice way to end this video on but I remember back in 2016 2017 I was doing a live stream on, a, on another social media platform and in the corner of my eye, there was just this person just standing there. This is in TKO, Popcorn Mall. And there was this person just standing there. And as I was talking to my audience, I looked and he smiled at me. This is Gregory, Gregory Rivers now. He smiled at me. And I thought, who's, who's, the, who's this guy just standing there smiling at me? And I didn't know it at the time, but his wife is looking at him. She wasn't looking at me. So she's looking to him for attention and he's looking to me for attention. I'm like, okay. So I continue with my live stream and then when I finished, he approached me and I can't remember why he approached me, but I do remember him saying, oh, I, I saw you, you were very animated on the, uh, on whatever you're doing. And we got talking and I didn't know who he was. This is important. I didn't know who he was because again, I, I don't consume, I don't ingest the media that is, that is existing here. So I didn't know anything about him. I just, I just saw this white guy who wanted to speak to me and he, he got talking. 
and he said, oh, I'm a, I'm a local actor. And, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I've been here for X amount of years and I can speak Cantonese. And I said, hey, would you like to come on my YouTube channel and we can just chat about your experience here? I'm always interested in people's experiences because I have an experience here. I used to live here as a child back in the 80s and then I left and then I've come back. So total, I've been here out of my 43 years of life, 16 years here. <clears throat> and my sister was born here. So this place has a special place in my heart. So we arranged something, we sat down and we chatted. And I wasn't starstruck. And if I had known who he was, I might have panicked a bit, got the settings wrong on the, on the camera and sort of fumbled my conversation. But I just got talking to him like any other guaylo in Hong Kong as guaylos do. And as I was talking to him, people were looking at him and I noticed that they, as I was looking into the camera, we're both staring at the camera. If you watch the video, you can see the positioning. There's people going past and I'm, and I'm eyeballing them and I'm thinking, who, why, why are they doing this? And then later I find out like, who he is. And I go, on, I go on the internet, as you've probably done now to look for things about him. I was like, oh my God, this guy has been in all these dramas and he's done all this and he speaks fluent Cantonese. This is amazing. Oh my God. So of course I try to make it a regular thing every year or once every two years, try and meet up with Gregory and um, just, just chat with him and get to know the, the skinny, the skinny, the news about Hong Kong through him because he's got this unique, or he had this unique perspective because he is a man of two countries coming from Australia and then he's lived and breathed Hong Kong to such a degree that other Hong Kong people say he is a Hong Konger. So uh, I just wanted to share that story. Uh, it's a tiny story. I've known him in real life for probably about six or seven hours. And he, he, he trusted me enough to let me text him sometimes and just, just chat on the down low about things. Um, and I wanted to do something this year actually with him. So that's really unfortunate. I wanted to catch up on, on his career and other, other things in his life. And now we can't. Um, so yeah, that, that's really sad. Like I say, there's a duality here and I'm thinking about the Hong Kong people who I don't know and I can't get to know in the same degree that he would have done because he just, he just lifted that language up and just puts it inside him, you know? But I think about the people who are going to be upset again when the tragedy of Leslie Cheung, Cheung uh, is still in people's hearts and now their hearts are going to be filled up with more compassion towards towards this man. Um, so, so yeah, I just wanted to share those thoughts that I had, and I just, I'm, I'm I'm losing my vocabulary because the weight of the weight of this is is coming down as the more I speak about it, and I'm talking about these people here who are in plenty of unfortunate circumstances. Let's just say in these last four or five years give or take your opinions on on the uh, the unfortunate nature of having to live here and deal with the circumstances in this city and i don't think i don't think the people here obviously no one wanted it but i don't think they they wanted it and if gregory's relatives are, they certainly didn't want it either but to end it on a positive note i will always remember his eyes the intensity of his eyes like a dog ready to play with a ball and I, I'm the ball obviously in that metaphor and yeah I'll just always remember the intensity and uh, the passion of somebody who who really ingratiated himself with the Hong Kong people didn't just coast didn't sort of live an ephemeral life here a couple of years here then off off to Singapore maybe or back to Blighty his heart was here and when I mean his heart was here there were things that we spoke about privately in conversation that I can't, I can't share even after his passing, but you, you don't understand how much, how much he wanted to do for Hong Kong people during certain times and he couldn't, and it, and it hurt him that he couldn't do anything about it. That's all I can say, but I wanted to add that and I couldn't remember it as I was speaking before. And the Hong Kong people's hearts, ah, oh. <laughs> I can't, I can't continue. Uh, I'm just really sad, and uh, just thank you to, uh, just thank you for listening to my 
uh, story. I'm actually going to watch some of those videos. Some of my friends have said, oh, I'm watching your old videos again. Because there aren't many actual long videos in English, importantly, uh, of him on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, they, they just hold an extra special bit of value now, don't they? For anybody who wants to learn about the man who, um, who set an example with, with wanting to immerse himself in life until he didn't want to. Okay, thank you.